What is up? It's the Figure Hunter, and today we're gonna do the final analysis testing for the Whoop body on the Whoop 4.0, uh, actually strap. And we're gonna look at actually how accurate was it when worn in one of these Whoop body solutions, specifically the Everyday Boxer. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I've got the Polar Pacer uh, review coming out and a number of different reviews coming up, different devices, different types of devices. So stay tuned for more, so please subscribe. So as I shared in the initial uh, overview of the boxers, we are gonna look at a hands-on really quick of this. But like I have said in previous testing videos, when I come across a heart rate that is having failing accuracy, I just sort of stop the analytics early. So we're gonna look at the accuracy of the WHOOP 4.0 when worn on the boxers, specifically and analytically to see how accurate it is versus a Polar H10 chest strap, which is sort of an industry standard, is sort of like a medical grade chest uh, heart rate metric for keeping up with the intensity of a CrossFit workout or high intensity interval interval workout. So we're gonna look at it as just sort of a brief hands-on of what you get in the package. And then I'm gonna look at the accuracy results quickly and in summary when wearing the Whoop 4.0 on the bicep, which was scored a 95% accurate. We're gonna look at the charts for how it sort of looks when compared to a chest strap. Um, in a number of charts. We're gonna talk about it briefly about the accuracy when wearing the 4.0 on the wrist and why you should never wear it on the wrist if you're gonna do it any kind of high intensity workouts. I'll show you the analytical results for that. And then we're gonna look at the charts and the results for the specifics for the Whoop 4.0 when worn on the boxer specifically. After we do that, we're gonna talk about, you know, the overall other cons that I faced with it and overall summary of the boxes as an everyday experience. So with that, let's look at the hands-on of what you get in the boxer strap. And remember, this video is primarily focused on the heart rate accuracy because these body solutions, and we'll talk about this in the summary, are a great idea. So you don't actually have to have something on your wrist. You don't have to have something that maybe gets wet in the shower and soaks through a shirt. Um, so it's a great concept, but can it keep up? If it doesn't keep up with the accuracy of the intensity of a more intense workout, then it's not a worthwhile solution for everyday life. So with that, let's look at what you get in the package and then talk a little bit. All right, so here they are. Really simple, you know, very clean overall lines, very clean packaging. This is actually brand new because this is the largest that I ordered in addition because of what I'll talk about in the summary of the cons um, with regard to sizing and how you size these puppies. So it comes in, it just tells you what to do and it's simple instructions. You just put like the ridge line um, where the clasp goes in on one side into the Velcro and we're gonna look at that. So here is the Whoop Boxers. It's sort of like a neoprene feel, but very, very thin with a thick band on the front um, so a thick band all around, and then you have the place where it enters. So you slide that out, there's Velcro here, and there's, there's, no, there's no clear cover. It's just basically the sensor against your skin right here, and it slides in perfectly and hugs in. There's like some uh, micro abrasion sort of rubberized backing to it, so it holds in place and it just Velcros together. One thing you're gonna notice about the boxers is that there's no flap. You know, these are just sort of straight one material. So going to the bathroom is interesting when you're wearing a suit. So this is what you get. It is a high quality feel. The band is actually really tall. So that's actually problematic in the front because you get a lot of fold overlap, but overall really high quality feel. And even with the larges, which is a big size for me, it's a one size up for me, um, the legs, the butt, everything feels really tight. So it's not like it's feeling loosey goosey anywhere, even if you go with the size up. So let's talk about, let's get back to so the That's video. really pretty simple and straightforward. Very clean marketing, very simple and straight, you know, to the point, very, I mean, just really good branding and marketing all around. So now we're gonna look at how the results were when wearing the Whoop 4.0 on the wrist. We're just gonna sort of touch back and say, okay, well, what were the results before with wearing it on the wrist very briefly and why you should never wear it on the wrist and wearing it on a bicep band and what the charts look like and the uh, analytical um, heart rate analysis results were for wearing it on the bicep, and then we'll talk about what the results were for wearing it on the boxers. All right, so we're gonna take a walk through history on the accuracy of the Whoop 4.0 on the wrist and on the bicep. So the first was the results on the wrist. So you can see it's green and just like the average heart rate keeping up, but the zone five, so 90 to 100% of heart rate intensity, lots of failures, lots of red, and then the zone four and five, which is 80 to 100%, 
you know, it was failing on a couple of workouts as well as you know, some green. And the final result was 60% accurate. Now that is a bad score. That means 40% inaccurate. Missed 40% of what? The most intense zone five part of your heart rate, uh, which is the biggest point of cardiovascular strain, which would calculate and assess to the biggest point of strain. So do not wear this on the wrist. It is a bad and not accurate. So now you look at the results. These are the chart results for on the bicep. Now what we're gonna look at now is the results for the bicep. And so you can see that it's, it's really clean. You actually get really good results. There's a little offage. Actually, there's offages throughout, but just by a few seconds and um, not keeping up with some of the declines in the chest strap. That's the lifting portion. I broke down all these older workouts just in two parts. This is the Metcon, so more intense. It is keeping up with you know the higher intensity zones. That's 160 to 180, and peaking up at 179 on the heart rate is the highest level of my heart rate. So here you have another lifting session where it kept up okay. I mean, this is actually really great for an optical sensor. It's on the bicep, as we've talked about. And then you got the workout. So it missed part of the beginning. You know, basically, it's keeping up the same sort of flow of the workout in the most in intense peak. So that's 160, 160 beats per minute. So that's, you know, in my uh, 90th, 90th percentile. So now you have some weighted weight strict pull-ups uh, li literally listed in the title there, but you can see that it's not keeping up with the fluctuation of the heart rate um, on the chest strap. So it didn't keep up with the variance but it did keep up with the peaks and the overall um, intensity portions. And then you got the Metcon where it did keep up, you know, tracked, it, missed it in the beginning, but it overall kept up. So now you have the, another lifting session or the first part of a workout before going to the Metcon. You can see that it, you know, missed some of the peaks, missed some of the variation of heart rate when your heart rate goes up and then comes back down, not terrible. And then I don't know what happened here. I don't, you know, it just didn't keep up as well with this one workout. It stayed on track with the heart rate or stayed up with the heart rate. I, I can't say if this, the chest strap had a failure in the later portion of the Metcon, but still you can see the results. Here was a great results where it kept up with an intense uh, 2000 meter row for time. And then a workout on the tail end, it, you know, had some blips in there, just some minor differences, minor points, but not bad all around. And then now you have another warm up session, warm up and power snatches. It kept up with the flow of the workout, some offages, you know, you can see there's a, some, some gaps here in the accuracy. Um, and then in the overall uh, intensity of the workout in the later part, you can see it was missing some of the heart rate accurate parts at the higher intense zones, but still doing a good job here was Chad, you know, it's a super long workout with a bunch of minor variation, although the chest strap did fluctuate more and the whoop mostly kept up with it, but not perfectly. So here are the results. What do you see? When you go with the colors, you just look at the colors. It's all green except for a couple of blips. It's not in the highest 90th percentile in all the areas. Um, and then what is the calculation for it? 95% accurate. So when you're wearing this, at least across you know, eight workouts or seven workouts, I, I cut out one of the workouts, I think, that I thought the heart rate um, the chest strap was actually inaccurate. That one that had the glitch, I just took that out because I felt like that might have been erroneous. So overall, 95% accurate. That's a really good accuracy score. And you can see you know, how it looks when it has offages, what the offages look like in general across the spectrum of time. So let's okay, talk so about So like the this. results for what I experienced in wearing the WHOOP 4.0 in the boxers for intense, intense, intense workouts, we're gonna look at those charts in a second, but just remember I stopped this video early because typically when a device doesn't keep up analytically, it's not worth testing for multiple, multiple workouts. So let's dive in and see what the results really are. So make sure you dive into this part. All right, so now we're looking at the results, specifically the charts for the WHOOP 4.0 when worn in the boxers. When worn in the boxers, can it keep up? We just saw all the charts for uh, an accurate tracking, what accurate looks like, what accurate, picture looks like just in you know the overlay of the chest strap versus the heart rate results here now what did what were the workouts that i did heavy back squats heavy deadlifts heavy strict presses heavy clean and jerks because that's the, the strength uh program we're on or the cycle we're on three murph prep workouts which means higher intensity which includes running but also uh, pull-ups push-ups and squats uh, burby box jump overs double unders high rep deadlifts so lots and lots lots of wall balls long and short burst row intervals. So long intervals where your, your heart rate slowly gets to very high levels or short burst where your heart rate just jumps up to high levels. Headstand push-ups, high rep power snatches. That was an exhausting workout. I did not enjoy that. And then high rep 
hang power clean. So this is what it was put through. So let's look at the results to see how the accuracy when worn in the boxers turned out to be. Having in the backdrop of our mind what it looked like on a chart for a highly accurate, 95% accurate when worn on the bicep. Workout number one. This includes the lifting and the Metcon. Heavy back squats, spot on. Maybe some minor glitches with the whoop in the, you know, declining down below the chest strap, but excellent accuracy. Next workout, the lifting portions, spot on. What do we see about lifting portions? And we think back to the lifting portion of the workout that we saw on the charts with the Warren on the bicep strap. This is more accurate. This is a better result. Metcon, better result. Workout number three, exactly spot on. Minor, minor glitches. This is incredibly accurate at the highest levels of heart rate, 160 beats a minute. Sorry if this is moving around the screen around too much. Workout number four. This may be the most erroneous that I've seen, but look at the chart like in each of the times. Now these are lower heart rate ranges, but it's just keeping up with any fluctuation. It's like anything I'm doing, it's like, oh yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha, I'm following. Maybe, you know, the heart, obviously I didn't spike up in that one point unless I had some sort of heartbeat irregularity in the chest strap, but next workout. This was a long workout with a lot of intensity, two different intensity sessions with a lot of lifting. Perfect alignment. Perfect alignment. Perfect alignment on the Metcon, spot on. There's a whoop alert for me. Um, now again, minor variation, but look at the other hills and valleys. It's like there's the overlay. All you see is the whoop results, chest strap is behind it. Here, you see some minor differences on the Metcon portion but very, very minor, that's very excellent. And then this one was when I closed the books. I normally stop doing the analysis if something is failing after a number of workouts. The reason I'm stopping any doing any more analysis, I'm not running this through numbers, I'm not doing an analytical calculation because this is incredibly accurate. Without even looking at the calculations, I know the results are above the accuracy of wearing the whoop on your bicep. Above the accuracy, above 95% accurate. It's keeping up, you know, maybe some ultra minor peaks, but look at how much it is keeping up with the slightest of variation in my heart rate in the lifting session. And then this was intervals with a minute and a half rest in between. Spot on. Minor variation of one, but it is like keeping up full tilt. Full tilt. So let's talk about the reason I'm stopping is only because it is incredibly accurate. We don't need to run numbers. It's more than 95% accurate. It's 100% trustworthy. It's absolutely a fantastic solution to wear that stupid whoop 4.0 puck on your hip in the boxers. And there you have it. Super duper, incredibly accurate. As accurate, if not more accurate, than wearing the Whoop 4.0 on the bicep. And you don't have to fidget around with a stupid strap. You don't have to switch it between the wrist and the bicep. You don't have to do anything else and you are gonna get super high quality heart rate accuracy when wearing this dumb thing on the band of your boxers. Crazy, that's awesome. So let's talk about the cons. What are the cons of the boxers? You know, simply, you know, like the minor con is that it is on your waistband. So I wear a suit every day for work and I have a belt and the belt has thickness. So when you're sitting down, you feel a compression of the lump at the back. Not the biggest things in the world, but eh, one of the things. Um, the second thing is that I've been using these boxers for two weeks. I have four pairs that I just rotate through the wash for, for two weeks. Um, and I'm already seeing the Velcro come apart like the part that attaches to the back of the strap, the Velcro is peeling up. So am I gonna get that replaced? I don't think I'm gonna bother with sending it back to Whoop or making a complaint, but it's only two weeks of use, so take that for what it's worth. Now, what are the bigger issues? The bigger issues are is that I ordered the mediums initially because I'm in the medium range, but they are incredibly tight, incredibly tight. So 
in dealing with that, that's sort of not so comfortable. And so I requested and they, they sent me some larges as a replacement. And what did I think? I thought the larges were gonna be like flippy flappy, you know, just too much room, but they're still really snug. So if you're going to look at the right sizing, you want to make sure you're aware of the size ranges and you're airing on the larger size, at least when you're going with underwear based uh, whoop body solutions because it is it is tight it's not you know the band is tight as well as even the legs are tight so and then the other i would say like the biggest day-to-day -day fail in the design is that there is not a flap and you wear a suit every day and you notice the absence of an underwear flap and i don't know why they designed it i don't know whose decision it was but i'd like to talk to that person because this is a stupid design it's not impossible. It doesn't mean you're like, it shouldn't do this. I still think this is the best solution on the planet in some ways, and we'll talk about that in a second, but the missing flap is a super annoying aspect of the design of these boxes. So that's primarily it. You wanna err on the bigger side because these are tight and the missing flap. So otherwise than that, they're comfortable. So what do I think in summary? I think this is freaking awesome. I think these are a fantastic solution. I do not like wearing it on the bicep and you have to for a workout. I don't mind it during the workout, but you also get into that fidgety back and forth, putting it back on the wristband, going back to the bicep band for your workout. Oh, did I forget that? You know, you have those issues there. And for somebody that wears multiple devices or for somebody that just doesn't like having something on their wrist all the time, then that's a problem. Well, enter underwear. Like I said in the first video, You've always got underwear on, unless you're taking a shower or something very awesome in your life is happening. Otherwise, you should have underwear on. And if you have underwear on, then you're getting all the same analytics and you're getting super high quality uh, heart rate accuracy when doing an intense workout off the stupid hip. That is crazy to me. I just thought, is there blood flow back there? Is it work? It, could it possibly work? And it, for sure, keeps up with the intensity of the most, you know, I was covering into the higher parts of my 90 to 100% heart rate zone, and it was spot on. That is fantastic results. And this means that this is a completely useful solution. So as a Whoop owner, as somebody who's decided to keep it for at least the next six months, this is how I'm gonna wear my Whoop. Does it cost a lot of money? Yes, it is a big downside. I should have mentioned that in the cons is the price. The con is it's, a, it's an expensive pair of underwear, but it's an expensive device. If you're buying the device, you might as well go for the creature comforts of how to best use the device and how to best enjoy the device, which would mean you just buy eight pairs of underwear and that should be enough to get you through or else maybe you're not doing your laundry often enough, but eight pairs of underwear should last you and you just sort of rotate and you just pop it in and out and you're good to go. You don't even think about it the rest of the time. You don't have to change out of anything. You don't have to flip a strap. You don't have to do anything. You just wear it and go. And that is a great solution, which makes the Whoop a very unique solution in the world of the wrist-based um, industry that we're in. So with that, that's the full and final summary of the review for the Whoop Body Everyday Boxers and the heart rate accuracy when doing so in the intensest of the most intense workouts. So Fick your hunter, thanks so much for watching.